seen the Prime Minister take this wheel drive at both China and Pakistan. As far as harboring terrorists goes, both China and Pakistan are guilty of that. We do know the kind of uh, flourishing career, if I could say so, as far as terrorists go in Pakistan. And then you have China, a fair weather ally of Pakistan, that goes on to shield uh, such terrorists on a global platform like the UNSC. Uh, definitely, definitely. I think uh, Prime Minister rightly called out to say that, look, terrorism is a threat for both, uh, you know, the regional as well as uh, global peace efforts. And therefore, you must not hesitate to, you know, condemn uh, countries which use terrorism as an instrument of state policy. And I think that was very clear. There is no denying the fact that Pakistan has been using terrorism as an instrument of state policy, irrespective of whatever it might say. And well, it did not refer to Pakistan directly, but it was absolutely clear that terrorism, we must not hesitate as members of the SEO to condemn countries which allow terrorism terrorism to be used as an instrument of state policy. Even in China, he was quite very, of course, he did not again name China specifically, but it was quite clear that uh, obviously both China and Pakistan seem to be hand in glove in all activities that, that are taking place, and therefore they are a threat to the world peace. I would have been very much happy should whatever uh, Xi Jinping had to say, but primarily in for world peace, if those words that they utter, mutual trust, sovereignty and ensuring that there is a respect for dialogue in the, uh, the disagreements that occur, but none that the China speaks about. They intend to even respect because China has thrown all agreements with India to the wind to do what they did in Eastern Ladakh. So having said that, I think this was the right platform and very well secured coin, word secure, in which again mentioning the aspect of respecting territorial, uh, you know, integrity and sovereignty of every nation. I think Prime Minister did not hesitate, and that was clearly conveyed in no uncertain terms to countries that matter, and that was just clearly taken well, because the retaliation by Pakistan was, at, was absolutely quite clear that they have taken the hint that Pakistan is very much there, and therefore you found what uh, Sherif spoke about, that our minorities was primarily what they themselves have not shown any respect to the minorities in their own country. Absolutely. So all these kind of things, yeah. So I think it is very, very clear, and I think Prime Minister has very clearly brought out, and I hope and sincerely hope that word spoken by uh, the, the President of China, that is Xi Jinping, also adhere to what they speak and walk the talk, and so much so that even, uh, I think, is welcoming Iran was a very good thing, because Chabar Fort is something, uh, is very, very important for us, because this Chabar Fort, just about 170-odd uh, kilometers from Gwada, wherein, again, yes. China's involvement is there, Chinese involvement with Iran, with for us, a deal we have signed with them for about $400 billion. So mm -hmm. there is a lot that has been said. I hope and sincerely hope that global peace and Vasudeva Kutumbakam, that you talk about the family, the world as a family and not just, just neighbors. I think uh, Prime Minister clearly brought out everything. Yeah. Yes, and Ashok Sajjanhar, it's interesting the kind of commentary that came to the fore from the Pakistani Prime Minister in response as well. As expected and as, as they've done many times in the past on multiple global fora, the Pakistani Prime Minister then went on to play the victim card to say that, uh, you know, we too are victims of terror. But it is them who have ensured that these terror groups flourish in their own backyard. You are very right, Poonam. I think uh, the world has uh, seen through the game of Pakistan they might have sort of, you know, tried to play this victim card and uh, you would recall that uh, they said that in this global war on terror, they had lost so many people and their uh, economy had been devastated. And uh, you would also remember that in his uh, tweet on the 1st of January 2018, what Donald Trump had said that the United States has paid $33 billion uh, to Pakistan to fight uh, the war on terror in terms of coalition support fund. So uh, Pakistan has been trying to play that victim card that they are as much of a victim of terrorism as anyone else. And you would recall that when we had the foreign minister's meeting of the SCO just about uh, uh, two months ago on the 4th and 5th of May, then uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari had said that, you know, India and uh, 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 Pakistan should sit across the table and talk about terrorism because both of them are suffering from terrorism. But of course, uh, what Dr. Jaishankar said is that the victims of terrorism cannot sit at the same table with the perpetrators of terrorism. So uh, I think uh, this is very, very clear. Whatever uh, Pakistan might say, 
because you look at the 1267 committee designations uh, in the UN Security Council Poonam and there you would find that more than 50% of the people who are designated, they are from Pakistan and uh, it is, yes. a, as the Prime Minister said, it is a state policy. After all, where mm. was Osama bin Laden found? You know, he was not found uh, up uh, in the mountains of nowhere. He was found in Pakistan, Abbottabad, in the cantonment. So, you know, uh, whatever uh, uh, Pakistan might try to do, and of course, at times they have tried to play this other game of good terrorists and bad terrorists, as far as, uh, you know, in the Afghanistan Taliban. The other uh, game that they try to play is that these are non-state actors. We have no control over them. But, you know, meaning if uh, that government is in uh, power, in a particular country, it is the responsibility of that uh, uh, go government, of that administration, of that establishment to ensure that there is law and order in that country. So, you know, you can't yes. hide behind these uh, fallacious arguments and these rules that, uh, you know, we are victims, these are non-state actors. I think all their, uh, uh, these uh, have been called out and the world is very, very clear and all that is due to the fact that India has been relentless in pursuing this, in uh, using each and every fora, whether it is the United Nations or it is BRICS or it is G20, everywhere India has called out uh, Pakistan and that is why it was put under the FATF and that is why it mm. has its back to the wall and is in a corner. Puna. Absolutely, and Ashok Sajanhar, it looks like one government after another, Pakistan just seems to be in denial because even today we had the Pakistani Prime Minister come out and say that diplomatic brownie points should not be scored, taking a dick perhaps at India, not knowing that India will always have an upper hand because our conscience is clear, unlike Pakistan's. No, absolutely. You know, meaning this is not scoring diplomatic uh, brownie points because this would really imply that as far as terrorism is concerned, I have the full right to continue to do uh, terrorism against you. You are the victims, you are suffering, your people are dying, your uh, destruction and uh, death is taking place in your country. But you do not have the right to raise uh, that particular issue because if you raise that issue, then I'm saying I will, uh, you know, go on to say that you are scoring diplomatic brownie points. You know, that will not fly because uh, terrorism is a very serious issue. And uh, that is, uh, it is also... Article 1, you know, whatever uh, international document you take, treaty you take, agreement you take, terrorism comes up as number one issue that the whole world has to get together to deal with it. But then it is, uh, you know, the double-faced uh, hypocrisy that you see in some uh, countries. And yes. uh, unfortunately, Pakistan has been surviving like this because earlier, because of its geographical uh, location, its position, it had the support from the United States, and today it has the support from China. So whatever happens in the, uh, even in the UN Security Council, when uh, uh, most recently the issue of Sajid Mir went there, there yes. also uh, China stopped in the way. And not only, it was not only a technical hold or a veto, but it was a permanent block that China has put. And I think mm. uh, countries uh, like uh, India, United States, uh, France, Britain, they really have to get together as we did, all of us, you know, when we tried to put uh, Masood Azhar, you know, uh, if you recall, yes. uh, Poonam, in 2009, this issue was taken up in the 1267 committee. And it took yeah. us all of 10 years to get Masood Azhar on the 1267 uh, designated uh, list. So I yes. think uh, for the others also, more recently, I think we've been pushing back against China and uh, the time taken for uh, China to lift its uh, uh, technical hold has become much shorter. And so mm. I think this pushback against both China and Pakistan needs to continue so that... Uh, and the message is quite clear, uh, Ashok Sajjanhar, that uh, the world stands with India as far as these kind of transgressions that come to the fore, both on the eastern and the western frontier. And I want to get in Lieutenant General Kulkarni as well, uh, once again into the conversation. Lieutenant General Kulkarni, the Prime Minister also interestingly spoke about how the need to respect sovereignty is very, very important. He also then said that that cannot come at the cost of connectivity perhaps hinting at uh, the CPEC project and the attempts that are being made by China. See, definitely, you know, even, even referring to Chabar also, as I was mentioning earlier also, after all, the very fact that he also insisted that Afghanistan does need humanitarian assistance and that could again pass to go to Afghanistan, 
done, like India earlier in uh, earlier times also done, sent it through the Chaba for the uh, the wheat that was sent to them. 